What's going on, everybody? It is March 31st, Saturday. We've got Easter and April Fool's tomorrow, and we have 15 baseball games today. Um, if you're crazy enough to play the all-day slate, I guess. Uh, the slates are split up pretty much perfectly. The only game that really doesn't have much value, and I'm not going to touch on it at all, is the 6 o'clock start for the Rays Red Sox. That's generally not in either of the two major slates, and unless you're a real crazy person playing all 15 games today, um, you're not going to miss it. <laughs> At least I hope you're not going to miss it. Um, with all these games, we need to just dive in. So let's take a look. Uh, first game up on the docket is Mets hosting the Cardinals. Uh, the Mets are projected for four runs, uh, Cardinals 3.5. That gives the Mets a 56% chance to win. Uh, on the hill for the Mets, Jake DeGrom with a 10K per nine, 2.5 walk per nine, 3.38 FIP. Uh, that's all projected through Steamer. Then Michael Waka going for the Cardinals, 8.4Ks per nine, three walks per nine, 3.94 FIP. Uh, both guys are, you know, solid pitchers. Um, if we take a look, <clears throat> excuse me, at DeGrom to start, I think he's uh, one of the best pitcher plays on FanDuel, if not the best pitcher play. Uh, at 9,300, um, I think that he's in an opportunity to provide really nice value. He grades out better than uh, anybody else that I see tonight, and I would uh, I would have a lot of, of DeGrom. On DK, I don't see any issue with him being one of your two pitchers. Um, seems to be one of the better values at the top end. You know, you can make a case for Strasburg and Carrasco. Um but I think that DeGrom is well ahead of Darvish on DK, and that's definitely a direction I would want to go. Let me get a little water. Okay. Michael Waka, um, I don't see him very playable. Sorry, guys. I don't see Waka very playable on FanDuel. Uh, I, don't, I don't really like the price. Um... 7,800 is not really going to get him there. I, I see a lot of better value towards the lower end. And I think a lot of the high-end pitching today uh, grades out pretty well from a value perspective. Uh, same sort of scenario for Waka on DK. I don't have any interest in him at all. Um, if we look at hitters, uh, I'm not a huge fan of either one of these teams today from a stack perspective. Um, I might have a little bit of Cespedes in one-offs, maybe a little bit of Jay Bruce in one-offs on FanDuel. On DK, if you wanted to stack any of those first four guys, um, Nimo, Cespedes, Bruce, or uh, Astribal Cabrera, uh, you can go there. But there's not a ton of value on the Mets tonight, or th this afternoon. Um, it's not really a direction I'm looking to stack. Similar situation for the Cardinals. Um, I'd probably be okay having a little bit of Dexter Fowler on FanDuel. Um, but from a stack perspective, the, the Cardinals aren't a team I'm looking at. Uh, I like DeGrom a lot, and I wouldn't want to run a stack head-on into, into DeGrom. So most of this game is a stay away from me outside of uh, having a lot of DeGrom on the hill. Go to the Tigers now. Tigers and Pirates. Uh, Tigers projected 3.9 runs. Pirates projected 3.6. That's a 55% chance to win for the Tigers. We've got Michael Fulmer going on the hill for the Tigers. 7.2 Ks uh, per nine, 2.6 walks per nine, and a 4.27 FIP. And then we have Trevor Williams going for the Pirates. 6.7 Ks per nine, yep. 3.2 walks per nine, and a 4.5 whip. Um, obviously, neither of these guys are... Uh, High, high end. Uh, Fulmer, actually, one of the more expensive pitchers on FanDuel today, but in my opinion, a terrible value. Uh, I wouldn't touch him whatsoever. Uh, if we look at Fulmer on DK, uh, a little bit better of a value if you want to use him as a second pitcher or go for two low-priced pitchers on DK. I don't hate it, but I really don't love it. 
Um, it's just not a lot to like. Uh, 7.2 Ks is a little bit less than I would like to see. I do appreciate the low walk rate, but with the FIP over four and a quarter, um, you're sort of just hoping for the best. Uh, for Trevor Williams, um, not my idea of a flyer. Doesn't get enough strikeouts in my opinion. Uh, he's not someone that I would really want to punt with on FanDuel um, or DraftKings in my opinion. You can make a case for him being a second pitcher on DK, but you know, with them being the underdogs and uh, him, Trevor Williams, you know, with a projected 4.5 FIP, it's going to be tough for me to get there. Hitting stacks, on the other hand, look pretty good, um, particularly on DK for the Tigers. I think running out any of the top five guys uh, between Martin, Candelario, uh, Cabrera, Castellanos, and Victor Martinez, you can get really nice stacks there. In particular, uh, the Cabrera-Castellanos combo looks really nice tonight, um, and that's on DK. Uh, I don't love them as much on FanDuel, Cabrera and Castellanos, that is. Uh, I think that the value is more in, like, Martin and Candelario. So I'd be more likely to stack the top two guys from the Tigers and then stack Cabrera and Castellanos on DK. But I don't have any problem grabbing any of the top five guys on either site. And then I think that you could work James McCann in as a value play if need be, but that's not necessarily the direction I want to go. Only a 396 projected slugging. Um, it's a little bit light on the high end. Uh, so no problems with Tiger stacks. Um, you want to stick to those first five batters, though. And then for the Pirates, I also don't really have much problem uh, stacking them, particularly on FanDuel, where I think uh, Polanco, Bell, and Corey Dickerson uh, look like a really nice low-salary stack. Um even Harrison as well. So you can go two, three, four, five uh, with the Pirates and get what I think is a, is a really nice amount of value coming back for salary, allowing you to pay up elsewhere. So if you wanted to go with someone like DeGrom and then grab the big chunk of uh, Pirates, I think that's the start of a really nice lineup. The value isn't as crazy on DK for the Pirates, but Again, from that two through six spot, you know, if you want to get Marte and involved as well, uh, I think that you can make some pretty nice combos of guys on DK. But I would probably be sticking to like the Harrison Polanco Bell group on uh, on DK. That's just me. Reds are hosting the Nats. Three and a half runs projected for the Reds, four and a half projected for the Nats. Uh, National 60% likely to win. Uh, Luis Castillo on the hill for the Reds, 9 Ks per nine, 2.9 walks per nine, 3.97 FIP. It's very solid. Uh, the problem with that is that they're facing the Nationals and Steven Strasburg with the 10.3 Ks per nine, 2.5 walks per nine, and a uh, 3.34 whip. We all know that Strasburg's exceptional. Uh, if we want to look at Castillo first, grades out as a nice value play on FanDuel. Um, I'd imagine that a lot of people might be off of him just because of the matchup, but I think if you want to do a little bit of a contrarian pitcher play, uh, Castillo actually doesn't look too shabby. Um, on DraftKings, uh, I think he looks like an exceptional value uh, at 6000 one of the lower salaried pitchers for the night. Um, I think that he would be a really interesting second starter. He's a guy that can uh, pick up a lot of Ks. I know you're running head-on into a pretty difficult um, Nationals lineup, but you know sometimes you need to take that sort of flyer, get a, a low-owned guy. Um, although, yeah, that, that winning percentage might run up against him. I like him. Um, I'm gonna have. A, I will take a flyer on him a little bit uh, on both sides. Now Strasburg, most expensive pitcher on Fanduel at ten thousand, and I have no problem paying that freight. Um, outside of Joey Votto, I'm not super worried about any major issues on the Reds, and uh, he has the opportunity to rack up some Ks. 
um, any one of those top flight pitchers on FanDuel actually looked pretty good today. And if we look at Strasburg on DK at 11-5, third most expensive pitcher across the entire day. Uh, again, no issues at all running out Strasburg. He's in a really good spot. Now, for the Reds, um, I don't really want to touch any part of this lineup. Uh, while Votto has high-end talent, uh, I don't see I don't see much value for the dollar at all for him. Um, if you want to pop Jesse Winker into a uh, as a one-off play at you know the two thousand dollar price point on Fanduel, there could be some value there just from you know potential for extra at bats, but not a guy that uh, uh, there's just not much to look at for the Reds. It's too difficult of a matchup. Uh, Nats, on the other hand, I think that are they're a little stackable. If we look at DK first, uh, that Eaton, Rendon, uh, Harper, Zimmerman first four looks like it would be a, a very nice option. Um, I don't love Harper as much on FanDuel at 4700 uh, That price is a little bit prohibitive. You're obviously getting, you know, one of the best hitters in baseball, but... Um, I think that you can fill out your outfield in a little bit cleaner of a fashion tonight. Uh, my focus would probably be grabbing Eaton and Rendon uh, just for those extra plate appearances. Um, and Howie Kendrick could be an interesting value sleeper um, if he does hit fifth uh, and play tonight or this afternoon again. Um, decent chance to provide value on FanDuel because of that price. But no problems grabbing anybody from the Nats. Uh, they look like they're in a good spot. You know, buyer beware though. Luis Castillo, not the worst. Um, so could be a more interesting game there. Uh, but again, my focus would be on Eaton and Rendon, and then on DK. You can feel free to add in Harper and Zimmerman. To the A's. A's hosting the Angels. Uh, A's with the 4.3 projected runs, uh, Angels with the 4.7 projected runs. That's a 5.4, yeah, 5.4. It's just, it's too early on a Saturday. I've got Liverpool, well, not on right now, but they were on the side monitor, not winning, so I'm a bit distracted. Let's get the focus here. J diving in. Angels, 54% chance to win. Uh, Daniel Mengden on the hill for the A's, 7.2 Ks per nine, 3.5 walks per nine, and a 4.8 FIP. He's not very good. Matt Shoemaker on the hill for the Angels, uh, 7.9 Ks per nine, 2.5 walks per nine, and four and a half FIP. Also not the best. Uh, Mengden on FanDuel, not somebody I really want to want to roster. Um, A's are the underdogs. puts a little puts too many guys on base. I uh, could really see the Angels lineup cycling through. Um, and then Mengden on DK, not really playable for me. Uh, if we look at Shoemaker on FanDuel, I think he's dramatically overpriced. Uh, he's not a guy that I'd be looking at in that 7,000 tier. Um, and then Shoemaker on DK, though, I think would be a fine second pitcher. Uh, 7,000, I think the value play could be there uh, for Shoemaker, especially with the Angels being favored. But there should be some runs in this game, and that's not necessarily the best direction you want to go uh, if you're looking to grab pitchers. Now, for hitters, um, I think both teams have some interesting stack plays in play. Um, for the A's, I think that grabbing that top four, uh, Joyce, uh, Semien, uh, Lowry and Chris Davis uh, would be fine. Both sides, they look fine. Um, I think you'd get a little bit more value out of them on DK, but uh, no problem grabbing those sorts of combinations. As I talked about before, you want to try to get guys that are next to each other in the order. Um, that's where you'll get the most synergy, and the higher up in the order, the more plate appearances you have the opportunity to get. Anytime you get extra opportunities, you are in business. Um... I don't really love Matt Olson on FanDuel. Uh, those taters on opening day are uh, making it a little bit more difficult. Um, but price looks good on DK, so you can go and grab any sort of those that first five on DK. Whereas on FanDuel, I'd probably look be, only be looking through Chris Davis. Uh, but no problems uh, grabbing any sort of A's stacks. 
no, no problems grabbing any angel stacks as well. Um, angel stacks look a little bit better on DK. Trout, Upton, Pujols, um, I'm guessing will be pretty popular. They're, they look like a very nice high end and value play um, from a stack perspective. Uh, you can go one to five here. I probably wouldn't look towards Angelton Simmons. Pour one out for the former Brave. Um, but I think you can go to Cozart and, and uh, Cole Calhoun without any real issues. Um, stacking up A's and Angels looks fine, particularly with this total. Uh, Rain did I spell Rangers wrong? I certainly did. Rangers hosting the Astros. Uh, Rangers with the 4.3 expected runs. Astros with the 5.7 expected runs. This is a game with a total of 10. Uh, the Astros have a 64% chance to win. It should come as no surprise that the Astros lineup is going to look good. But first, we'll start with pitching. Uh, Matt Moore on the hill for the Rangers. 7 Ks per 9, 3.5 walks per 9, and a 5.24 whip, FIP, rather, uh, which is... Not advantageous. Let's just put it that way. That's why you see uh, the Astros projected for 5.7 runs. Lance McCuller is on the hill for the Astros. 9.6 uh, Ks per nine, three and a half walks per nine with a 3.6 whip. This is a very, very different pitched game. I used to love Matt Moore too. It's a shame. Uh, Matt Moore is completely unplayable on both sides. You want no part of that. Lance McCullers, on the other hand, um, not the best value, in my opinion, on FanDuel. A $7,900 price point is a little difficult for him. And if you look at him on DK, I actually think that that's not really the best either. Uh, I see better values out there, so I don't think that McCullers is a guy I'm going to be looking at very much. Um, if we look at Rangers hitters, uh, I think you'd be okay to grab DeShields and Gallo as a, a mini Rangers stack. I don't, I don't have a problem there. I think they both provide some solid value. And even going through Andrews, uh, Beltre, and Mazzara, even Chu on FanDuel, they're all okay. Um, on DK for the Rangers, you can go DeShields, Gallo, Andrews, Beltre, and feel fine with that. Um, they're a pretty good stack from a value perspective, not necessarily the same sort of high end. Um, but they're good on a dollar-for-dollar dollar basis. The opposite of that would be the Astros, where, oh boy, do they grade out well. Springer, Bregman, Altuve, Correa, Marwin Gonzalez, Gaddis. You know, I talk about them in every video so far, but it's because they're mashing the ball. Uh, bowl, you want to have, mat, like, monster stacks with these guys. Uh, grab whoever you want. Uh, fit it in however you can. But... Having any combo of Astros hitters is going to be in your best interest. They grade out better than anyone on the slate. We'll wait until we get to the Orioles, but everyone on the slate, in my opinion. Uh, this is the best combination of dollar-for-dollar uh, dollar value and high-end talent. Um, Astros look amazing. You're going to want to have bits and pieces there. Go to the Blue Jays. Uh, Jays with a 4.3 projected runs. Yankees 4.7. Uh, Yankees with a 55% chance to win. We have Marco Estrada on the hill for the Jays. 8Ks per 9, 3.5 walks, and a 508 FIP. Uh, heading up against CC Sabathia. 7.4Ks per 9, 3.2 walks per 9, and a 4.8 FIP. Uh, not the most entertaining pitching matchup here. Uh, from a top end. Sabathia is very different guy now. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Uh, Estrada, middle of the pack in terms of salary on FanDuel. Not a guy that I would look for very much. Sabathia, similar situation. Middle of the pack on FanDuel. Not a guy I overly want to focus on. Although I can see a scenario of using him as a pay down guy. Um, if we look on DK... Estrada, not a bad value uh, as a second starter. Um, I would rather go to Sabathia, who's actually $200 cheaper than Estrada on uh, on DK, and with a better chance at getting the win, 
I think that Sabathia grades out just a little bit better there as a second starter. Um, feel free to stack first four Blue Jays, uh, Travis, Donaldson, Smoke, and Pierce, um, particularly Donaldson and Smoke, in my opinion, um, I think would grade out the best. Uh, if you wanted to look a little bit closer at the Blue Jays on FanDuel, I like Travis and Pierce from a value perspective. I think Donaldson and Smoke have the bigger high-end uh, potential. I don't necessarily love the stack of the Blue Jays as much um, on FanDuel. I think that they fit a bit more efficiently on DK. Now, the Yankees, you're going to want a part of this. Um, you, can walk, you can go all the way down to... Neil Walker, if need be. Um, obviously, the heart of the Judge Stanton group is uh, very expensive on both sites, but I mean, they're just they they should rake. You know, these are guys that um, absolutely destroy the ball. So I do like Yankee stacks on DK. I'm a little bit more muted. I don't see as much value there. Uh, if I were going to do a Yankee stack on Fanduel, it would start with Brett Gardner. I would probably go Gardner Judge, Gregorius maybe, or Gardner Judge. I would try to do Gardner Judge Stanton, but that's a lot of salary. Um, Gardner Judge, it would be my my baseline for the Yankees. Um, I might not go too much further than that on FanDuel just from a salary perspective. So lots to like from the Yankees. It might be tough to fit in with all of that salary, uh, but I think that they're a team to look at on on both sides. Now, this one, not very interesting. Uh, Mariners and Indians. Is that uh, the calculations wrong? Well, it should be 50-50. The line is neutral. But let me fix that bug at some point in time. Uh, three and a half runs a piece for these teams. Um, Mariners at 3.5, Indians 3.5. Mariners have James Paxson going on the hill. 9.1 Ks per nine, 2.7 walks per nine, and a 3.58 FIP. Very good. Uh, for the Indians, Carlos Carrasco on the hill, 9.6 Ks per nine, 2.3 walks, and a 3.47 FIP. Uh, both of these guys are high-end pitchers, in my opinion, um, and they're both going to look pretty good. It also makes their hitters look not so good. So Paxton on FanDuel is uh, probably my second favorite pitcher. Um 8400 so really nice value from a, a pitching perspective. He's a guy that likes to get a lot of Ks. Uh, I think that Paxton looks best behind Jake DeGrom tonight. Um, and then for Carrasco, uh, 9900 on FanDuel. I think that he looks really good. Uh, I would just sort of prefer Paxton because of the price. I'd much rather have the extra $1,500. And if we look at, uh, at DK, I feel the same way. I think that they're both in play. They both look great. Uh, Carrasco grades out actually a little bit better on DraftKings, in my opinion, than he does on FanDuel. But Paxton is just criminally underpriced, in my opinion, for this game. Um, he's one of my favorite pitchers on the day. Uh, if you wanted to go and grab him and... I mean, you can go either direction. You could have another starter higher than him. You could go for a value play lower than him. He's in a really nice spot. Um, Paxton's one of my favorite players of the board today. Now, because of these guys both being really nice pitchers, uh, we don't have a lot to like here from a hitting perspective. Uh, I don't really like anything here as a one-off. If you want to get cute and have some sort of Mariner stack on DK, I you can get there. But um, for me, I don't really want any part of the Mariners at all. And then on uh, from the Indians, I think that Jose Ramirez looks okay um, on DK. I don't see the value on FanDuel at all. The $5,500 price point is ludicrous. Um, you can probably get away with a little bit of Kipnis on FanDuel. But in my opinion, I think the Mariners and Indians are both two teams that you don't really want a part of from a fantasy perspective. I'm skipping over the Rays and Red Sox uh, because they're not involved in any of the two main slates today. Um, so I didn't, I didn't run any numbers. They're not going to be involved in anything I play. Um, we'll go to the Orioles next. Orioles, 6.1 expected runs. 3.4 expected runs for the... That might just be a bug. What do we have here? 
Spoons and Orioles. Yeah, that is very much a bug. Uh, I see what's happening there. Let's make that 100. I made a bad formula, you guys. It's the laziness on my part. Doesn't change anything we've looked at yet. Uh, Orioles 4.7 runs, Twins 4.8 runs. I knew that looked weird. Oh, there's no reason the Orioles should have been projected for so many runs. We've got a double negative formula set. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit. Uh, Orioles 4.7 runs, Twins 4.8 runs, Twins 51% chance to win. Oh, I thought my watch was vibrating. I thought it was going to be my dad telling me Liverpool scored. Uh, Andrew Cashner on the hill for the Orioles. 5.7 projected Ks per nine, three and a half walks, and a 536 FIP. Going up against Kyle Gibson of the Twins, 6.8 Ks per nine, 3.2 walks, and a four and a half FIP. Uh, Kashner is atrocious. Um, he's just not the guy that people thought he was going to be eight years ago. Uh, 5.7 Ks per nine is uh, like the territory of if they wanted to put me on the hill. That's not true. I wouldn't strike out anyone. <laughs> I didn't strike out people when I played. Uh, don't roster Kashner, in my opinion. Uh, not a good play. And if you look at Kashner on uh, DK, you also don't want him there. If you take a look at Kyle Gibson on FanDuel, I think that he's an interesting value for 5700 He's the third cheapest pitcher tonight. Um, you know, it, it could be worth a flyer. Uh, I wouldn't do it because I think the Orioles' bats are too good, but I would get I would understand Gibson being a full punt at pitcher. Um, and if you look at him on DK, where the fuck is he hiding? Oh, middle tier, Jesus, seventy five hundred price point on on DraftKings. You don't want to touch him at all. Uh, he's only in play on FanDuel because of his price. Now. Uh, hitters are very much in play on both squads. Uh, for the Orioles, you can basically stack one through eight. Any real combination is fine. The higher you are in the order, the better. But I love, love, love Chris Davis, Machado, Scope, Adam Jones. Um, you can get me to Mancini and Tim Beckham. Um, Alvarez isn't really the best, but you want to grab uh, big chunks of those Orioles bats. Obviously, don't take those Orioles bats if you decide to run flyers out on Kyle Gibson, but you know what I'm saying. Um, top half of that Orioles lineup looks great. Uh, their pricing is perfect. And I kind of feel the same way for the Twins. Um, on DK, I'd probably only go for the first four. I'd go Dozier, Maurer, Sano, and Rosario. On, uh, on FanDuel, I think you can go all the way down to uh, Eduardo Escobar, although I'd probably stop at Morrison. Um, but getting something like, you know, Maurer, Sano, Rosario, knocking off a first baseman, third baseman, outfielder in a stack, it's pretty nice. And then Brian Dozier, I mean, you can have him as a one-off in a bunch of lineups. Uh, just a really nice price, really nice projected totals, 344 projected on base, 482 slugging. Uh, he just looks really good you, to use him in any real scenario. Sorry, I quickly paused to uh, handle my dogs, and I don't remember the last thing that I was saying. So, in summary, don't be afraid to roster any anyone from the Orioles. Don't be afraid to stack anyone on the Twins from the top five. Uh, focus is Dozier, Maurer, Sano, Rosario. I think I got it. Go to the Braves. Unfortunately, not at the top of the NL East any longer. Hosting the Phillies. Uh, 4.6 projected runs for the Braves, 4.4 for the Phillies, 52% chance to win uh, for Atlanta. Brandon McCarthy on the hill for the Braves, 7.6 Ks per nine, uh, three walks per nine, and a 4.36 FIP. 9.1 Ks per nine for Vince Velasquez and the Phillies, 3.6 projected walks per nine, and a 4.7 FIP. Uh, if we look at Brandon McCarthy on FanDuel and DraftKings, uh, he's in the middle of the pack for everything and not a particularly good value. Value. He's not a direction I'm going to go. Um, for Vince Velasquez, uh, I don't see him as a particularly good value on FanDuel, and I think that he's probably the worst value on DraftKings. Uh, significantly, 
uh, overpriced in my opinion. Um, if you're looking to do any stacks from the Braves, I think that DK looks a little bit better. You can grab any of those first three. Uh, Ender, Ozzy, and Freddie uh, look like they would be perfect on DraftKings. Uh, Freddie Freeman a little bit light on the value on FanDuel, but I'd still be fine there. And I think that you can squeeze in Nick Markakis on FanDuel and not be upset about it. For the Phillies, um, I think you'd be fine going anywhere in those top four. Hernandez, Santana, Nick Williams, and Hoskins, uh, I think could all be a part of a perfectly acceptable stack. Um, it's not my favorite game in the world to, to stack either side of. Nobody stands out as like really crazy. Uh, Freddie Freeman does look like a really nice play on DK, but for me, <clears throat> I don't have a problem having any of these guys. I wouldn't seek it out, but if they were popping up for me, I'd, I'd be willing to continue. Go Braves. Now, Marlins hosting the Cubbies. Uh, Marlins with the 3.4 projected runs. Cubs, 5.1. 68% chance to win um, for the Cubs. Desbane, 5.9 Ks per nine, 3.6 walks per nine, and a 489 FIP. Not good for the Marlins. I'm bad at saying that dude's name, too. You Darvish on the hill for the Cubbies. 10.4 projected Ks per nine, 2.8 walks per nine, and a 3.53 FIP. Uh, very different pitching matchup here. Um, you're not looking for Despain at all on either site. If you're looking for Darvish, um, I have no problem having him as your pitcher on FanDuel. I think at 9400 he's a, he's very nicely priced if you wanted to go a different direction than J Jake DeGrom. Uh, I don't really love Darvish on DK, though. I wouldn't use him as one of my starters. Uh, I think that that would be a fade for me. Um, Marlins hitters are not on the board for me. I don't want to run into you, Darvish. Exact opposite scenario for the Cubs. Uh, no problem um, on DK going Hap, Bryant, Rizzo, Contreras, Schwarber. Any sort of combination there I think is very good. Um, on FanDuel, I would start with Hap and Bryant. I don't really love Rizzo's value at 4,800, uh, but Wilson Contreras looks like he'd be a really nice option um, as well. So maybe a 1 2 4 uh, on FanDuel would look best. Uh, but no problems grabbing a bunch of Cubbies. Very nice spot. Um, Marlins are duty, and the Cubs are projected to win by uh, 1.7 runs, which is a monster, monster gap uh, in baseball. Royals and White Sox. 50-50 uh, game, both teams projected for four and a half runs. Uh, Ian Kennedy on the hill for the Royals. 7.8Ks uh, per nine, 3.4 walks per nine, and a 509 FIP. Uh, Luke Giolito on the hill for the White Sox. 7.8Ks per nine, 4.3 walks per nine, and a 5.1 FIP. Um, you know, with Giolito being young... Uh, definitely has the high-end talent, you know, former number one uh, prospect in baseball. Um, so those numbers don't necessarily look as good for uh, young pitchers. He has the opportunity to greatly out uh, outperform those sort of seamer projections. Uh, for Kennedy, uh, interesting punt play, I guess, at uh, on FanDuel. Maybe not the direction I would want to go. Uh, I definitely don't want Luke Giolito on FanDuel. I don't think that um, he grades out as well. Significantly more expensive than Ian Kennedy. So uh, Kennedy could be worth a flyer in GPPs, but don't expect anything too crazy. You don't want to touch Kennedy at all on DK uh, or Giolito, in my opinion. Uh, both of those guys, to me, are significantly overpriced on DraftKings. So if we're looking at lineups, uh, no problem here having any sort of stack coming from the Royals. My focus would be 2-3-4. I think Whit Merrifield, uh, Moose Tacos, and Duda would be a very nice 2-3-4 stack uh, from the Royals. You can get to John Jay if you'd like or Cuthbert if you'd like, but my focus, I would be right in that wheelhouse of 2-3-4. Um, I think that would be the best stack to grab from the Royals. And then from the White Sox, 
Uh, I'd go one to four if I were going to be stacking up. Uh, Moncada, Garcia, Abreu, and Davidson look the best. Uh, Nicky Delmonico looks okay on FanDuel. I don't really love him on DK. I think 3600 is a tad pricey. Um, no problems using uh, Jose Abreu in a one-off scenario on DK. I think that he would be an interesting just uh, solo bat. Um, but if I were stacking either of these teams, I think there's a lot to like on the top half of both of their lineups. Diamondbacks. Hosting the Rockies. Uh, D-backs 4.6 projected runs. Uh, Rockies 3.9 projected runs. Diamondbacks 58% chance to win. We've got Grinky on the hill for the D-backs. 8.7 Ks per nine. 2.3 walks per nine and a 368 FIP. Uh, German Marquez, 8.2 Ks per nine, 2.8 walks per nine, and a 4.39 FIP uh, going for the Rockies. Um, for Grinky, I don't see him as someone that I would want to have a ton of on FanDuel. I think all of the guys priced ahead of him are better values on the board today. Um, on DK, I can get there. I don't really love the value of much of anybody outside of Carrasco on DK. So the only guy that I would wholly avoid is paying up for Darvish. I would look in the DeGrom, Strasburg, Carrasco, Grinky group, in my opinion. Um, for Marquez, uh, no interest whatsoever on FanDuel and uh, no interest whatsoever on DK. So... Diamondbacks hitters, uh, I think that you can only really focus on those first three, particularly on DK. So you can do Peralta, Pollock, and Goldschmidt. Um, Goldschmidt's a little tough to grab on FanDuel, but I would I would look in that same direction there. Um, if you want to use Kettle Marte as a uh, a punty shortstop, you know I, I can get behind that as well, but not a ton to like in a Diamondback stack. I'd be relatively limited there. And then for the Rockies, I don't really see any stack potential at all. Um, you can probably one-off Charlie Blackman. Uh, you can one-off Nolan Arenado on DK. Uh, other than that, um, not having any real bats from the Rockies tonight. Two games left. We're almost there. Uh, Padres hosting the Brewers. Padres with a 3.9 projected runs. Brewers 4.1. Uh, we're looking at the Brewers being 52% favorites here in San Diego. Uh, Luis Perdomo is on the hill for the Padres. 6.6 Ks per nine. 3.3 uh, walks and a 431 FIP. Uh, Brent Suter, 6.7 Ks per nine. 2.7 walks per nine and a 478 FIP. Neither of these guys are any good. Um, not going to get the Ks that you're looking for. I would not have um, either one of these guys. Uh, you can make a case for Perdomo being a value pitcher. Uh, I just don't think that he misses enough bats to to really see a high end output for him. Um, and if we look at DK, uh, I'm indifferent. It's not really a direction that I'm looking to go for either one of these guys. They just they don't strike enough guys out in my opinion. Um, if we're looking at the Padres hitters, not really anything that I find to be super stackable. Um, you know, if you want to go Will Myers and Hosmer on DK, that's probably fine with me. Um, I think Myers is fine as a one-off. Maybe a little bit of Hosmer, although I think he's really crappily priced on FanDuel. Uh, Margot is not necessarily for me because I just don't feel like this is a game with a high output. Um, if we look at the Brewers, I, I think that uh, a Yelich, Kane, Shaw, Braun like combination uh, is okay on DK. I don't really see the value there on FanDuel. If you want to get really weird, uh, Braun and Eric Timms could be a nice sort of under-owned stack. Um, I wouldn't expect that to be too popular, 
but really this just isn't a great game uh, to have a ton of parts of it's one that i'll likely ignore and then we get to the final game dodgers hosting the giants uh dodgers 4.7 expected runs giants 3.3 uh, 65% chance to win for the Dodgers. Kenta Maeda uh, on the hill for the Dodgers. 8.8 Ks per nine, 2.4 walks per nine, and a 426 FIP. Derek Holland, 6.8 Ks per nine, mm -mm. 3.7 walks per nine, mm -mm. 4.78 FIP. Uh, Maeda doesn't look great on FanDuel. <clears throat> Not a guy that I want to focus at at that particular price point. I would much rather have James Paxson for a, an extra $100. Um, Derek Holland, second cheapest pitcher on FanDuel. He's not in play whatsoever. Not in play on DK either. Uh, and I don't really love Kenta Maeda on, uh, on DraftKings. Not a place where I'm looking for pitching. Giants hitters are completely off the board. I don't want a single bit of any one of them. Uh, I, they're just fully not available so we'll focus on the Dodgers for now uh, I think you can go anywhere in the top five but your best focus is going to be Taylor Seeger Puig um, I don't really like Hernandez tonight I don't see the high end for him although he is an interesting value play uh, Cody Bellinger um, looks like a really nice play on DK so I would do something like Taylor Seeger Puig Bellinger if I could uh, but I don't have any problem at all having a bunch of Dodgers. Whew. That's a long one, guys. Baseball's tough. The 15, yeah, well, 14 for us, but that's so many games to talk about. There's so much going on, but I like it. I'm really excited to really dive into baseball moving forward. Um, so that is it. That's it. That's it for everything here. I don't, I'm just, I'm, I'm rambling now. Uh, if you like this video, please like it on YouTube. If you uh, like our channel, please subscribe. We are doing our best to grow this every day. Um, starting Monday, we're going to have uh, more people involved on the videos. We're just trying to get this started um, right now. So consider this our soft launch. Please go to awesomeo.com. Check out all the content we are offering. We will be rolling out a subscription model in the future. Uh, but for right now, everything we have on the website is free. So please check it out. What you're getting are rankings and recommendations directly from Osimo himself, the current number one ranked DFS player. So we're not just uh, coming up with stuff out of thin air here. Uh, we're backing this with, you know, the best in the business. So uh, if you're interested in that, please come check it out. Um, we're putting out tons of content every day and it's only going to grow bigger and bigger as the days go on. So the more we see you guys there, the more that we're going to be able to do. Best of luck today um, on whatever you're playing, whether that's baseball, soccer earlier today, or uh, basketball spread out through the day. Not the best slate, um, but best of luck in all of it. And uh, I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. Good luck.